Yeah, yeah. 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 You're willing to accept a little bit of risk if it really does your lot of good. That's right. That's right. Okay. Do we have some more time, or should we stop? It's up to you all. If you want to continue, we'll continue. I have to stay it's my time. Give us time. Let's take advantage of it. What triggers observation? Observations. What about it? What? Why does that happen? Why does it happen? Uh huh. Why do people with COPD get acute exacerbations? Uh, it could be a uh, virus infection, uh, so that you get a cold like anybody else, and then that infection added to the inflammation that's already going on all the time, uh, causes the formation of a lot more mucus, you get clogged up with mucus, and then you can breathe. It's okay. So that's one thing. Another uh, would be effects of air pollution, because you're dependent on clearing out the mucus that you form, and if you're starting inhaling chemicals, that slow the clearance of the mucus, then it can get gummed up down there and you can get into your exacerbation. Uh, could be the effects of some other uh, medications. Could be acid reflux, could be aspiration, uh, could be upper respiratory infections, like if you get a head cold or you get a sinus infection. A lot of people have a, a predictable sequence of getting a cold that goes into the sinuses and then it goes down into the chest. So, see that coming if you really vigorously treat the sinus infection sometimes you can head off the acute exacerbation. Uh, but uh, infections, irritants, chemical exposures are the usual things. But frequently people have it and can't really figure out what you know, what uh, I suspect that often exacerbations that seem to come out of nowhere are related to uh, gastroesophageal reflux episodes because they're so common, and they can frequently happen without you being aware of them. One more, uh, that I haven't mentioned about Singular. Singular is a drug that's an anti-lupitrine drug that works very well for some people with asthma. For some people, you can stop taking all the rest of your medicine uh, for asthma if, once you start Singular. Uh, those are only maybe 5% of people with asthma. For most people with asthma, it helps. For some people with asthma, it doesn't do anything. So it's kind of medicine where you can how well it works. Uh, for COPD, there aren't really any studies to show that it helps. So the overlap of COPD and asthma that you're taking to give it a try anyway. Uh, but uh, what you have is just COPD. Uh, or I can tell you the singular is healthy. So you would try and see if you believe it's healthy. If you don't think it's healthy, there's no reason to sleep. Another drug that some people uh, find useful is the opera. It's a real old drug here. Uh, most popular brand is uh, Theodore uh, or uh, Theo24. And this is a drug that helps both asthma and COPD. It's relatively inexpensive. The problem with it is that you do not want to take too big a dose because overdoses here are more serious than any of the other drugs. You try to maintain a blood level between 5 and 15 by taking the right amount of this drug. The right amount could be as little as 200 a day or could be as much as 1,200 a day. So you have to take a small amount to measure the blood level. And if it's too low, then you increase the amount and then measure the blood level again. And we'll see when it gets to the level between 5 and 15. 
once you get above 25, you can be having some pretty serious cycle. So, for some, some people do very well with this drug if uh, they take medicine according to schedule, follow directions, don't, take, don't forget to take them, don't take any of the doses, and uh, they've worked out how much to take. But the problem with the alkaline is that it interacts with practically every other drug in the market, so that your level may be all set while you're on one set of medicine. But if you have a new medicine, it can make a level go up or make a level go down. It also interacts with a lot of foods. You have to be careful what you eat. So although it has some good parts, it also is a very risky drug. And what you particularly don't want to do is uh, use it if somebody feels like, well, gee, I'm two of these a day and I feel a little better, I think I'll take more. No, I feel a lot better. But if I have a patient who I think is going to look at it that way, I'll even prescribe it because it's just too risky. You have to, you have to be very careful with this. Yeah. On the other hand, it's very inexpensive, so it's good for people on a limited budget, and uh, it helps a lot of people. You tend to think of it as if somebody already taking a bunch of drugs that are more commonly prescribed and still need something more. They're still out of breath. And you can see the patient coming in and says, well, what else do you have? You can think about this other one that I was saying. Uh, another one for another um, good drug for asthma, if you're highly allergic and you're reacting to everything on the skin test, I uh, think about Zolair. Zolair is an injection you get either every two weeks or every four weeks. And it works differently from all the other drugs. It's, it's an antibody against an antibody. People who have so many allergic reactions have a high level of a type of antibody called IgT, which, which participates in allergic reactions. So what Zolier is, is an antibody against the IgE. You inject it subcutaneously, it gets into the circulation, ties up the IgE, it makes it inactive. So it cuts down on allergic reactions. And for some people who've had very serious asthma, wonderful reducing the number of allergic reactions So if you're already taking uh, medicine for asthma, take all the usual medicines, still having a hard time, and you're very allergic to things, that's something to check in. It's called Zolia, it's not good nice. It's kind of expensive, but you have to go through a little ring world to get uh, with the insurance company to make sure they'll pay for it. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, sir. used for COPD, there are no studies to show that it increases the risk of dying from COPD. Uh, the people who were using it in these studies for asthma uh, were frequently not using an inhaled steroid along with it. So one thing is clear is that you should not use these drugs as your primary asthma control without using an inhaled steroid with it. There are no studies that show that if you do use it, long-acting bronchodilator with an inhaled steroid that there is an increased risk of death. However, the FDA requires that all combination products, Advair, Dulera, and uh, Simpacor, list this as a possible side effect because it includes that drug that is known to have a side effect. So, you, know, you see this ad on TV that says this is the greatest thing for your asthma, but by the way, if you take this drug, you have an increased risk of dying. You think, what? But that's what the FDA is making them say. 
it's not the drug that they're showing you, it's one of the ingredients in the combination that they're showing you. So the lesson that we learned from the research is don't take Coryvill or Cerebit or Adam if that's the only drug you're taking. It's only, it's only a good idea to use a combination with a drug theory. Because the two drugs work differently and they complement each other. The inhaled steroid is usually the, the, the number one long-term controller uh, for people who need a control drug for asthma. And if you're already taking that, adding inhaled steroid is, very, is a very effective boost into that. And it protects, it seems to protect, the fact that you're taking the steroid protects you against that risk of dying from a long, a long acting drug either.